Hi Cancer, welcome to my channel, Starkeology Tarot. I'm Desi, this is your April tarot reading. I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm so grateful to connect with you in this way. If you have an intention to set, a uh, dream to manifest, a question to ask, please do that now as I tune in with spirit. Some of this will resonate, some of it won't. Just take what resonates um, for you. That's what's meant for you. Let's do this. Cancer, so we have the Five of Cups, the Strength card, and the Two of Swords. Um, your strength, your courage, your endurance, and patience to go deep within yourself in April is, is what um, centers and grounds you this month. Um, this isn't a kind of strength where you force yourself anything through, sh you know, force yourself to do anything through sheer willpower. Um, it's not that kind of strength that you flaunt or that is visible to others. It's an inner strength that only you can hold yourself accountable. Only you know if you are doing what needs to be done inside yourself um, to best support yourself. The Five of Cups, um, some of you are facing some loss or sorrow or pain this month, whether it's something that happens to you this month or it's old sorrow and old pain, maybe a, a loss you've already had that you are, that's coming up to be healed this month and you finally have the strength to heal it. You finally have the courage to face this sorrowful part in yourself and, um, process it with the kind of depth and nuance that you need in order to process this, acknowledge it fully, and then allow it to be fully healed. It's only through processing this pain and, and grief, loss, sorrow, whatever it is that's coming up for you, that then you're able to make a very important decision for yourself this month, the Two of Swords. I think without the processing of past grief, of past rejection or past loss, um, then you don't really give yourself the inner courage to push through this decision. And instead you end up getting lost in the analysis paralysis of it in which you don't actually end up making any decision at all. Um, because there might be so much pressure that's being put on your thought process in deciding the right thing without really acknowledging the important feelings that you have inside of you that should be informing this decision. Um, it's like this sorrow or loss informs your decision making in some way. It gives you strength to make the right decision, what's right for you, not the right or wrong decision based on outward validation. Um, but it's incredible to look at sorrow and rejection in this way because it's a way that then you're able to see it as something that empowers you, a tool that empowers you rather than something that holds you back. It's almost like have the strength to face this deep pain in yourself um, or this loss in yourself or this grief so that you can advance yourself, so that you can grow, so that you can then um, make decisions that best serve you. Um, also the Five of Cups, we always see it, you know, he has these three spilled cups in front of him and then two full ones in the back. It's like you have to mourn what is lost, you have to grieve what is lost in order for you to eventually turn around and see what's still there. If we resist the grieving process or um, devalue it or um, doubt ourselves in it or tell ourselves it's not important or it's not good to be feeling these bad feelings. It's like we are gaslighting ourselves in a very important emotional process that is the very thing that allows us to move through the pain in the first place and recognize the, 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 qual the high quality of um, or, or the quality gifts really that still remain for us, that are, that are behind us, that might never be noticed if we are constantly, all our focus is constantly focused on resisting 
burying, pushing away the grief. Um, it's almost like that hold that's like a burden that we carry around that taints our view of positivity, um, taints our view of our blessings. No matter where we go, we're unable to then see the blessings when we're still, we still have this unprocessed pain. So this takes great, great strength, Cancer. And I think some of you might be feeling like this grief or sorrow is like a monster or a demon that you don't want to face within yourself. And that's part of the reason why you resist it. The truth is, the strength card is all about bringing those demons, bringing those monsters to light, to be faced, and realizing that they're not monsters at all. That they actually um, are these beautiful, natural things. Maybe it's not pain, but it's a desire in you. A desire that is holding a great amount of sorrow and grief and pain. and you have buried that desire because you've labeled it as bad in some way or you've labeled it as wild and um, dangerous strength the strength card is when we are finally at a place in our lives where we can welcome those things that we have labeled bad in the past about us almost like our character defects or defenses um things that we've labeled as being that but in fact, then seeing them as strengths in themselves, as guiding lights, as clues to our greater alignment and growth. So this is a time where you tame, you really come into peace with these monsters. You tame these monsters and you befriend these beasts so that they don't just run wild and rampant, destroying everything inside you as you're trying to bury them. When you give them an outlet, then you're able to um, confront them in a much more healthy way, um, make peace with them, harmonize with them, see what they have to teach you. And that's what moves you beyond this stagnant um, analysis paralysis phase of decision making. It's acknowledging the demon, you know, befriending the beast that gives you the, the truth, really. Sheds truths and facts about your current situation that empower you to make the decision that is best for you. Um, we also have King of Cups at the bottom of the deck, Cancer. So, this might be about you coming into, um, you know, where maybe you have um, tried to structure or direct your emotions before. Um, this could be a, a, a word from the divine to advise you to let some of those restrictions go, some of those structures go. You don't have to always process emotion in a specific way, in a specific neat, neat way. Um, neat and structured, um, perfect line, you know, there's a, sometimes in doing that, trying to make sense of emotion, we limit them. Um, emotions are meant to be felt, not thought. And we oftentimes, when our brains get too involved, we, too much thought comes from a process that's only supposed to be felt. Um, and sometimes those those feelings can inform thoughts. Other times they they just need to be felt and released. And I think that's what a lot of this grief is and pain and rejection or sorrow for you. It's just something that needs to be really deeply felt. Um, and that's how you gain a sense of authority over it. That's how you gain autonomy over it. Um, this also could be cancer, someone, a king of cups in your life, someone who is, you know, who has some sort of, um, who's very emotionally in touch, but has, uh, but has this, you know, their demons uh, ultimately under control, not someone who is at the mercy of their demons and therefore trying to continually silence them or bury them. This is someone who's very comfortable with all parts of himself and very comfortable talking about all parts of himself. And um, there's someone in your life who either is this or someone who's growing into this. 
this this figure of high emotional intelligence intelligence and this emotional intelligence is building and um It, it, this is a very positive influence in your life. Um, it's helping you on your own journey. And I see some of you even like helping each other in this way. So this is really beautiful, Cancer. I would love to hear what this looks like for you specifically in your life. Please comment below um, and share. Open your heart to me if you feel so inclined. Um, if you haven't liked or subscribed, please consider doing that. It would make me weep. I'm so grateful to have you be part of this collective. Um, I'm rooting for you in April and I'll see you next time.